Hi, Stuart Bruce here and I am the Spare Time Property Investor. In these podcasts, I'm going to share tips, tricks and lessons I've learned and will hopefully help you, especially if you're still working the nine to five. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spare Time Property Investor podcast with me, Stuart Bruce. Um, This week, it's another interview episode. Uh, Today, I'm joined by Emma Fielding, uh, a young property investor who is using property flips um, to replace her corporate salary. And she's doing a really good job of it um, by all accounts. It was great to catch up with her and learn what makes her tick. She's got a business background that I wasn't aware of, which was really interesting. And also how she got going with very little training or support. A really positive, interesting person. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the episode. Um, But before we go to that, I've got a couple of plugs. If this is the first episode you have listened to or watched, please go and check the others out. There's quite a few now. Um, A mixture of interview episodes and um, some with uh, just me. Um, So yeah, go and have a look, have a listen. Um, If you like them, please like them. Please review them as well because it helps other people find the podcast. And also, um, we have a free monthly newsletter um, which is all about property investment. Um, it goes out to our local area, but the free version is also available online. If you want to check that out, it's linked in my bio, just called free newsletter. Um, and if you head over there, please uh, subscribe so you get the next one delivered straight to your inbox. So that's it from me for now. Let's get to the interview with Emma Fielding. Thanks again, Emma, for coming on to the podcast. Uh, first off, it would be great to hear what a normal week looks like for you and how you manage to fit property investment around your day job. Um, so how I kind of fit property around my day job is that um, in my kind of corporate job, um, I work four days a week. Um, so I work Tuesday to Friday um, and then any other kind of spare time. So weekend, evenings, Mondays, etc. I'm working on the renovation um, and I try and get my trades in through the times that I'm working. So obviously progress is still happening while I'm kind of, you know, working in, in, in my corporate job. Okay. So was that four days of negotiation? Did you negotiate that or do you, I mean, do you kind of have a compressed week where you work longer hours on those days or, or how did that work? So actually, um, the company that I um, I work for, they've just done kind of a little bit of a, a reshuffle, actually, in terms of like our hours and stuff. And um, prior to kind of this reshuffle, I used to work 40 hours a week, Monday to Friday, nine to five. Yeah. Um, but actually now um, I actually kind of do 36 hours, but over the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, and then once every four weeks, I have to work a Saturday. So it's kind of a, a nice, kind of balance actually to get the Mondays off um to be able to you know pursue what I I actually love doing absolutely and I think this is one of those really key things that um I think a lot of people um need to kind of be aware of that you can do these things and also um uh, having that flexibility and kind of working slightly differently I mean a lot of employers these days have kind of different shift patterns and things that you can look into and sounds like yeah. the, the employee you have that was something they were looking at anyway but you can p- potentially do this for for you know people can potentially do this even if their employer yeah absolutely a, yeah you know, standard so that's really good and that and that gives you a predictable kind of time um every week that you can go and like focus on your property investment as well so that's great yeah, absolutely. So I know kind of a Monday, I'll be at the renovation all day, you know, I'll be here in a couple of weekends. Um, and then obviously the evenings as well. So just keeping track of everything. But, yeah. you know, letting the trades crack on with, with what they need to do, but also allowing me to actually, you know, fill out my, my day job and stuff. Absolutely. So um, obviously, um, you've got tra- trades people who um, you're happy to leave doing what they need to do. Um, yes. Is that because you've built up those relationships? You've kind of gotten um, kind of to know how good they are at their jobs or um, were they kind of trusted to do those things from day one? So my um, my kind of first flip, actually, um, I was very kind of new to the property game, especially in Yorkshire, um, even though I had done a renovation prior to getting in Yorkshire in the northeast. But obviously I used completely different trades. Um, and a lot of those were actually just recommendations of kind yeah. of friends and family members and stuff. And then when I got to kind of the second flip, so this latest renovation, I then started building my team a little bit more. So kind of stepping out of 
the box of the friends and family recommendations and really finding some really good quality trades um, out there that are actually so, so busy, but somehow managed to kind of fit me in and, and you know, work in the time skills that I need. And, and that can be quite tricky, actually, finding those people that you trust and that you rely on um, and that ultimately do a really, really good job. And, you know, for example, this morning, you know, the bathroom guy has been here <laughs> half half eight on a, on a Sunday morning to finish off. So, you know, that gives me reassurance that, you know, the trades are doing a really good job um, and we're pretty much nearly there. So great. I mean, I think them being busy is a good sign for one thing. Yes, it is. It is. And I think, you know, them being busy, but also them also working flat out as well. But also, you know, the quality of the work, it really does come down to to the quality. And yeah, the the quality is definitely there on this one, I would say. Sounds really good. Cool. Okay. So, I mean, obviously um, the day job, um, you're you're able to work those four days a week. Um, Is there anything you've learned from having um, your corporate job you think is transferable to the property investment world? Yeah, so actually my corporate job, um, I do a little bit of kind of like project management and kind of cost management and managing budgets as well. And kind of in a previous life, I did have a a, a technology business and and that was very much around kind of costs and things like that. So yeah, definitely, you know, your your project management styles and and how you get on with people and how you converse with them um, definitely, you know, can can play a really key part actually in getting the trades on time and, and, and to deliver exactly what they say they're going to deliver as well and if there's any problems that come up it's just actually the way that I would deal with that in the corporate world or maybe slightly change it because of mm-hmm. who, who they are or, or the person etc so it's just them little things that I make I think make a big difference but also you know skills like managing a budget and you know delivering things on time I think that's a whole different set of skill in itself um, and that's something that I've learned through the corporate world but also now I'm transferring it in property as well. Absolutely. No, it sounds, it sounds like a really invaluable skills that you built up, um, you know, doing that job. Did you just say you had um, a business then, a technology business? Yeah, so um, this is Tell going back a, a couple fun. of years now. Yeah, this is completely different to property. So um, I actually owned a, a travel comparison um, okay. app and um, this was back in 2014, I think. Yeah, about 2014. 14 maybe something like that um and yeah it did quite well won some competitions got some angel investment um and got some pretty big contracts with some uh, big travel operators in the uk but that kind of came to an end didn't really know what i was going to do and then before you know it i'm renovating my, my first house and, and and got the property bug but i mean um you know business is business so i mean you must have learned a lot of um, really helpful skills from setting that up and um, again, yeah. i'm sure a lot of that um that kind of learning you've been able to use in property yeah absolutely like when i set up that kind of first business i was you know 20 21 you know kind of very naive kind of very young but you know very much had a drive and ambition and and I just wanted to succeed and Mm -hmm. I think that's that's definitely still with me but just in a different kind of setting Um, and obviously now it's you know property and and obviously my my corporate career as well and you know just just having that um, kind of get up and go I think I think can uh, go a long way. No it sounds like you've got buckets of it so that's really (laughs) that's really cool okay so I mean so with Corona then, let's, let's fast forward to now. So with yeah. Corona, have, um, has the first lockdown and now the subsequent lockdown, lockdown two, which we're in now, has that kind of scuffed yeah. you, your deals? Has it slowed it down? Has it kind of made you change how you approach business or anything like that? So when I finished the first renovation, so I bought the first flip in December 2019. It took 13 weeks to actually um, renovate the whole property. And um, then I just had it on the market. I think it was for a week, maybe. And then obviously national lockdown, the first lockdown happened. I was like, oh, God, you know what? Nobody can come round to the house. No viewings can take place. What am I going to do? So I thought, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to retract. I'm just going to take it off the market because nobody can view it. Nobody likes a house being on the market, sitting there for ages and ages because people think there's something wrong with it Mm -hmm. when in actual fact, there really, really isn't. So obviously national 
international lockdown, the first one finished. Um, I think that was kind of in, what month was it? I think it was June, wasn't it? it was kind of late, early June or something. Yeah, um, something like that, yeah. Yeah, when it finished. Yeah, something like that. Um, and then obviously the market reopened. So I thought, right, okay, get it on the market. There's going to be a spike. And I kind of predicted there was going to be a spike because obviously yeah. people still want to move house and yeah. And yeah. Exactly. So, um, so I actually sold that first flip um, within 17 days of it going on the market right. um, from the first lockdown. Um, and then obviously, you know, the prices went up slightly and I, I was then looking for my next um, flip. And then that's when I came across this latest renovation. And I did get it slightly under the, um, the guide price at the time. But I think if I was buying something now, I don't think I would get it under the guide price price just because of the spike in the market mm -hmm. and it's very kind of um it's, i think the market r right now is is quite weird to be honest i don't really think exciting. agents know where it's going to be at and buyers are, you know obviously are still buying but obviously from an investor point of view i want a property for as cheap as possible I know. so you know it's it's not really like that at the minute so you know do you hold off do you not etc but anyway that's a whole different kettle of fish and <laughs> and then obviously lockdown two's happened um obviously where trades can still operate and you know obviously ca carry out their work which is really good so it's actually meant in lockdown two the latest renovation i've been able to carry on as normal um and actually still be able to to get it on the market um, even though obviously the viewings can still happen so that's the positive that obviously the, the viewing um, still, still, still can go ahead e even in lockdown too. Absolutely. I totally agree though. The market's really strange. I think people are paying over the odds for some stuff. I mean, it is. Yeah. Flying. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. So yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of scratching our heads a little bit sometimes when we're seeing what, what stuff's going for and things. It yeah. Is, it, I think, I think it is, it's a really odd, weird time. And I don't think like, it, I think it depends where you sit. Are you pessimistic? Are you optimistic? Mm -hmm. You know, I think it, that really depends um, on obviously, Absolutely. you know, the person buying the properties or selling them exact and stuff. But, you know, kind of prior to lockdown two and this spike, I would have thought this latest renovation would have gone on the market for 20 grand less than actually what it is mm. and i think that 20 grand difference is because of this spike um that we're currently going through yeah absolutely absolutely i, I mean things like the uh, stamp duty um calls and stuff like yeah that. i think that's really kind of um triggered people as well as the god yeah people. yeah i think it really has yeah. and i think you know i think probably for first time you know buyers and yeah, well yeah, kind yeah. of young families they're probably thinking oh you know there's no stamp duty let's oh, go and get the house of our dreams yeah. Um, and yeah, I know there's a lot of people that have come to me on Instagram, obviously inquiring about the house and, and that's kind of the situation that they're in. So I think that's, I think that's a good thing actually that, you know, oh, obviously yeah. there's no stamp duty and people yeah. can go and get the houses, um, of the dreams really. No, it's weird. So you were saying about, um, it sounded like you're buying at auction then is that is that your main product? no so my um my first renovation actually bought off market okay. so i think there's definitely quite a bit of luck in that um mm -hmm. i actually knew one of the estate agents and it was one of kind of his properties that was just sitting there he didn't want to renovate it so i was like yes i'll renovate it um and then i made obviously my, my money from that um and then this latest renovation um it was actually on right move it was okay. sitting on right move um since february and i Put my offer in june so obviously it was sitting on the market for for quite a while and obviously through through lockdown as well and i think um obviously the people that, that were selling it they just wanted to get rid of it um and yeah they obviously did and then i bought it that sounds good it sounds like the first one then if it was um did you say it was an estate agent's um Yes, it was. Yes. Did you did you have a period of building up a relationship with the, with the estate agents in your area, or is it just somebody you happen to know? Or no. So actually, what happened? They were actually um, so my my grandma actually passed away, um, and they were actually selling her house. Wow. Um, so it was just through conversation, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember I, I got my kind of decision in principle from obviously the bank and stuff, saying, "Oh, I, I can get a mortgage," and you know, obviously I was in, in my. Call 
corporate job quite early on then and um, they just happened to say oh you know we, we're going to put this property on the market you know it's going on in a couple of days if you want to go and view it go view it and um, it was actually going to go on the market for 15 grand more 24 hours later mm -hmm. if I hadn't have put a, a, an offer in that that evening um, so hence why I had to be really really quick with yeah, it yeah, yeah. Um, and, and obviously it paid off um, you know made the, the decision there and then and the uh, offer got accepted and then 13 weeks later um, it was valued a heck of a, a lot more it's fantastic that's really good so I mean and like having those conversations and kind of letting people know what you do and everything like yeah, that yeah exactly so exactly yeah. so important so what originally sparked your interest in property do you know what? I think, I think there's, a, there's a combination of, of a couple of things. And I think when you kind of get into kind of the flipping game and stuff and, you know, a bit of the buy to lets, for me personally, it's very much like Monopoly. Now, yeah. <laughs> as a kid, um, I, I actually love Monopoly Same. and yeah. I, I would always win. I, that was Same. one of the things I would always, <laughs> always, always win. Um, and I, even now I just see it as like Monopoly. I'm just buying better houses on better streets and, and things like that. And then kind of moving on, obviously, a couple of years later, um, at the time, I didn't, I didn't realize this at all. But I remember I was playing Sims back in the day. I mean, this is going back years and years ago. And I would actually design houses. Um, and I remember once getting the cheat code to have an, un an unlimited budget to actually obviously design like, you know, my dream house and and things like that. And I think looking back at that now, there was definitely obviously sparks where, you know, I potentially would go in property, but at the time I, I, I didn't know at all. And yeah. then obviously now I am, you know, many, many years later. Um, and yeah, I just think it's always something that I've wanted to do, but I never thought at the age of, of just turned 26 that I would be getting in, you know, renovations and flips and buy slits and, and whatever. You know, I genuinely thought I, I would be doing this kind of 40, 50, you know, semi-retired um, and definitely not thinking about going full-time in property at the age that I am, so. That's really interesting, yeah. I think, uh, I think like, for myself as well, you know, Monopoly, I used to love, like, houses and stuff like that, but I, yeah. I, I, I couldn't imagine um, investing in property when I was younger. It, it just didn't seem to um, be um, within reach. And it's, yeah. I suppose it's from education and things like that. You start to think, oh, no, it's, it is possible. And yeah, it is possible. Anything is possible, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Okay. So, um, so going from this kind of interest in it, you know, your monopoly and, you know, all that sort of business from, from that to business. So then from business, making that leap from, you know, having your, your company to invest in property, did you have any training? Did you have a mentor? Did you read loads of books? How, how did you make that kind of transition? So, it's quite a kind of long transition, I would say. Definitely not something that, that happened overnight. Um, I definitely haven't read any books. Um, I'm actually dyslexic. Okay. So for me, reading books is like a massive no-no. I, I just, I really struggle reading. My attention span is absolutely zilch. Um, it doesn't float my boat. However, um, kind of over the time of me being in business and obviously university and just, you know, getting to know um, obviously various people, your, your network expands. Um, and it definitely has over the last couple of years and I remember initially you know I was speaking to investors that you know have got 200 odd houses and I was always curious how have they done it and where did you start and what's the pitfalls and what's the really positives and what do you love and and all that kind of stuff and just having those conversations really kind of cemented my kind of understanding of property and actually how I would make money from it and actually can I make a career out of this um but then I also think you know my my business background I've got five generations of business owners um actually in my family oh, okay. and you know my parents would always say I've always been driven by kind of money and you know things and you know houses and, and whatever so it was probably always in me to to get in property it was just at what time that would be and obviously that is now um instead of being when i thought you know 40 50 um but in terms of training no i haven't had any 
um, whatsoever. Obviously, you know, yes, I, I have my degree and, and yes, I've been to a really um, successful university for entrepreneurship, but in terms of actual property training, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, zero, none. Yeah, well, fair play. Yeah, so you've been able to, <laughs> you've been able to uh, get cracking, though, haven't you? Without that, so that's fantastic. And I think, I think there is something about um, having a business background because, you know, mm. it's, it is it is a business. So you know, yes, you it is. That, yes, you know, yeah, it's it's just a, a different kind of widget, isn't it? Really. So yeah, no, it's really- yeah, absolutely. And and even on you know, well, especially flips, I'm always thinking of that profit and loss. Yeah. all the time that's always in the back of my head i'm always thinking budget i'm always thinking costs what am i going to be if i sell it for x amount what am i going to be if i sell it for x amount etc etc and that is always stayed with me and i think that will always stay with mm. me on whatever you know project i'm doing if it's buy to let or if it's you know a new build um you know yeah a new build property or a flip whatever that's always in the back of my head and i think as long as i've got that um i'll be in a good stead Fingers yeah. crossed. So yeah, no, yeah. Fingers crossed. I mean, there's always the unknown, isn't it? But it sounds like yeah, there's a, there's always <laughs> an element of of the unknown. Yeah. So yeah. So what? Um. So flips is your main. That's your main strategy, isn't it? So what? What made you kind of decide on that? So kind of the flips is more kind of the short term, really, uh-huh. because um, kind of going back to obviously you know uni and education and business and. I've always had this thing where actually cash is king. The more cash you have, um, obviously, the more flexibility you've got, the more buying power you've got. And and that's definitely paid precedent um, so far. So I always thought I would definitely do a couple of flips first, turn my 20 grand that that I started with into a bit more than that. Um, And then kind of from there, then go into the buy to lets and, and then, you know, get that passive income so, so to speak um and then start building up kind of my portfolio um and then you know maybe venture into hmos on and new builds and and go from there really but you know what i think as long as you've got the cash you you've got a good run rate um and you know i get a lot of messages off people from instagram saying oh i'm wanting to do kind of the bbr method but i've only got 25 grand and how far is that 25 grand gonna gonna stretch when you're gonna be doing bbr but you're not gonna be able to pull all your money out at once in in every deal you're gonna leave you know a couple of grand in and stuff and i just thought the more money i had the better and the longer period of time i'm gonna be able to do Mm. this um and it means obviously i don't have to get investors on board just yet i can wait and and you know i can reap the the re- the financial rewards just for me instead of somebody else so that's always what i've had um in the back of my mind but saying that i do get investors obviously ask you know when when can i invest in you or you know are you looking for them options not yet but maybe soon who knows that's a great position to be in, isn't it? People. Uh, are, yeah, you know, it is. It is. And also, you're, is. Building, you're building a great track record as well. So you know. Yeah, and I think I think that's important. You know, with any business, you need that solid foundation. That actually, I've done this before. I know what I'm doing. I'm using the same trays time and time again, and this and these are are, are the results from it. So right. you know, yeah, I think that track record is really important. Cool. What's so? What's your favorite and um, the favorite? Um, deal you've done so far um i would probably say this renovation that i'm in i won't i won't obviously give give away the profit Mm -hmm. but it's definitely more than the last one and it's probably double my (laughs) corporate wage nearly yeah very nice that's great so I always, I always said when I got into this game, as long as I'm earning more than my corporate wage, then I know it's kind of the path that I, I want to pursue. Um, and that's the, the a personal goal of mine um, that I have. But also, you know, we, we're creating um, beautiful homes that were once derelict or, yeah. you know, or no, nobody lived there and, and it was bringing the whole street down. And now we're turning into you know, great homes that, you know, families and, and people want to live in. And I think that's great. I think it's a, it's a nice achievement to have, I think. Absolutely. I think, I think that's one of those things that, um, you know, people um, forget sometimes when they talk about um, property investors and stuff like that. But, you know, as property investors, we're generally taking crappy rundown houses and making yeah. them into something, something much nicer for people to live in. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think it's really positive. 
yeah yeah and my first renovation i remember there was there's nobody lived in it for probably about two or three years and it was just derelict like you know it was just bringing the whole street down mm. um and then obviously you know you, you get in you, you do the renovation and you know then you even have the neighbors commenting be like oh i'm so glad you did that it looks really mm. nice and you know then you know you think oh actually yeah we, we've done a really good job there and again same with this renovation now you know this has been um kind of un unused since kind of january time okay. um so you know a couple of months and it, it was just standing still and then we've come in and created a really nice home for someone so that's really positive that's great really good that's cool cool okay so have you got um three top tips for people um, to invest in property around their day jobs Yes, I definitely have. So I've been thinking quite long and hard about these, Stuart, uh, because I do get this question quite a lot. What I would say is 100%, number one, do your research before you make any decisions whatsoever. Do your research, go out, speak to agents, go out, speak to investors, etc. trades, build up that kind of network and, and just get a feel for what the market's doing or what potentially the strategy you want to go down or or what you even want to get out of property i think understanding that i think is is a really good starting point for anyone um i think if they're obviously going to go down the property route kind of kind of know your your expectations but also know know your limits as well you know there isn't 50 hours um in a day for example and it's just kind of knowing what you're good at what you're not good at um passing some over over to trades and and just kind of building up um what it would potentially look like if you were to to go in property before you make that kind of leap um and then obviously from there you know take the leap you know put your money where your mouth is and i think there's a lot of people that will just sit on the idea for months and months years and years and i just think go out and do it and you know what you might make a couple of mistakes you might you know lose a little bit of money or you might go over budget but at least you've done it and at least you've had a go and tried and and then maybe if it's successful do another one again if it's successful do another one and then i think that's when the point you start think actually can i replace my corporate income with with property so i would always do that kind of phased approach um and that's kind of the tips that, that i would give to anybody so yeah number one do do your research know your, your kind of strengths and and weaknesses and, and what you're good at um and then obviously three do it in a kind of a phased approach from you know mal balancing your corporate job but also your your property career as well absolutely absolutely yeah, that sounds really good and especially i mean people do need to take action that's that's one of the, the yeah one of the keys that i'll get from that because like you say a lot of people um you know, you procrastinate and read and like think and kind of sit on these ideas for well, yeah, yeah. Years for some people. And uh, you don't really get going until you actually, you know, start buying properties and things like that. Yeah, yes, you, you've got to go out and do it. It doesn't matter if it's obviously your money or somebody else's money or whatever, but you've got to go out and do it because that's the only way you're going to know if, if, if you're good at it or if you're not good at it. So yeah cool okay so the next question is about um a top business book or property book but it sounds like you don't read <laughs> books no i hardly read got any, like a, a top kind of podcast or anything or or whatever you know something you kind of you go back to or you've really um benefited from um it's kind of so books yeah i don't really read i've actually got one property investment book and it's at the side of my bed and i'll be absolutely honest i've probably read the first paragraph uh -huh. so in terms of books i'm probably not as clued up as what i should be um but in terms of podcasts there's loads of property podcasts out there um obviously a lot of instagram um people that do podcasts um you know like taste talks and investing in property mm -hmm. and stuff and i just try and listen to a full range of podcasts doesn't matter if they're property related or or business or entrepreneurship or about mindset and psychology try and just listen to as much as what i can obviously when i'm not working <laughs> so you know you don't sit there with your headphones in just <laughs> just no i don't i it. don't my my attention span goes pretty quick i've got to be all in yeah, so yeah. That's cool. Cool. Okay. Have you got any um, top tools you use um, to help balance uh, property around your, your day job? 
So the kind of main tools that I use, um, obviously, definitely my phone, definitely my calendar. Um, I log everything in there. Um, and I know when the trades are going to turn up, what days they're going to turn up. But also as well, what I've started doing um, on the latest renovation is actually more doing kind of the project management tools. So more around kind of a critical path and a, and a grant chart and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think that's actually really, really useful because it keeps you on track. Yeah. Um, now, I know obviously mentally you know I have it in my mind but actually sometimes it's really exhausting you know you get in at 10 o'clock at night and you know your head is just absolutely like smashed with so yeah. much information and actually getting it down on a piece of paper or, or on my mac or whatever um I think really really helps to, sh to shut off um so that's kind of what I've started doing um a lot more and just kind of taking the budget side of things more seriously so I have all my formulas set up on excel and google mm. sheets um again which which really really help yeah sounds really good i think that point about dumping that information onto a document or something as well is so important because yes it's like, i do um, yeah it's just rattle, if it's just rattling around your head i mean it's just... yeah if it's rattling around your head at one o'clock in the morning which yeah. sometimes i do get you know you need to get it down on a piece of paper or on on a mac or whatever so yeah, that's great um so there's two more questions okay so one is what will your life look like when you've achieved achieved all your goals oh okay so my goals tend to move a little i i tend to go from one idea to another etc but what i would really really like and i think this would be a massive achievement for myself and and if i get there which fingers crossed i do um but is to have enough rentals um to actually be able to comfortably live off now I, i've got a figure in mind and um yeah for what i said before you know i know a couple of people that got over 200 properties now i'm not saying i want that many mm -hmm. but i would like a good chunk um of properties um and yeah i think you know that may be achievable in five years maybe i think possibly but we'll see we'll, we'll see what happens that sounds good though it sounds really good it sounds like you you're making moves um so yeah it sounds very achievable i think if you carry on the way you're going so, yeah. <laughs> just I think you just got to keep going you yeah. know I've definitely got that momentum now I, I've got the mm. trades behind me um, and yeah we, we just got to keep going and then the last question if you could speak to your 18 year old self what advice would you give to them um, my 18 year old self, actually, I was, um, well, I was still at college then, actually, mm. I was finishing off my A levels, very different to what I was now. But uh, even at that point, I remember, like, I did not think I would get in property. And I think, you know, just having that self belief, um, that actually you can go out and do it. So I would definitely say to myself, 18, you know, just have a bit more self confidence, just have a bit more kind of, yes, you can do this type type of attitude even though i did but i probably didn't believe it as much as what what i should have done um so yeah that's that's probably what i would say yeah absolutely it's it, it's almost it would almost be nice to see what what is possible for us to achieve do you know what i mean yeah like, little definitely what we can achieve um and i suppose it's like sometimes having those role models or being exposed to to somebody yeah. who we can kind of relate to have done something you know it's 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 really important for people to be able yeah to i i actually am um, well through one of my dad's contacts i kind of knew of this it's really successful property um investor and entrepreneur where i live and i remember kind of looking up to him you know 17 18 thinking oh just one day i'd love to build like the you know the buildings that he's building and and stuff and again it's just having that self-belief and that kind of not arrogance of you know yeah, yeah. over self confidence yeah. but just having that belief that yes you can go out and do it and it doesn't matter if you're from a council estate or you know a multi-billion pound company family whatever you know you, you can do it and um, but you've just got to put your money where your mouth is um and get out and do do it absolutely cool okay well thank you so much um obviously i'm, I'm going to keep a track of um i'm going to keep an eye on what you're up to on instagram and stuff like that to see um how you progress over the next uh, year or so um, brilliant where can other people find uh, you and what you're up to yeah so um everyone can find me on instagram which is emma property builds or i'm also on twitter um obviously emma fielding as well that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. And yeah, I'll see you again sometime. And maybe you could come back on at some point.
Yeah, absolutely, sure. Thank you so much for asking me as well. Really no appreciate it. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that interview with Emma. She's a really great person, really interesting and positive as well. I hope you'll agree. But that's it from me. I hope you have a great week. Best of luck. And I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please leave me a five-star review to help other people find it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.